I'll put a link in the description to a universal dishwasher installation kit that'll come with a power cord and a dishwasher hose as well as some of the other accessories uh, that you may need. Now you want to consult your manual to be sure of exact placement of where you can drill the hole uh, for uh, the uh, connections coming into your dishwasher. In my case the sink is to the left of the dishwasher and you can see all of the requirements here for where that hole can be drilled. So mine's going to be right about there and we're going to drill a hole that is an inch and a half in diameter using a hole saw bit. This is actually an inch and three quarter but it's going to be close enough for what we need to do. It's a Milwaukee set here. Once you get it lined up and then latch it in place, spin that down. Uh, we're going to be drilling a hole in that far back corner right there. What I'm going to do first is uh, measure where the center of my hole will be, which will be about, uh, what, an inch and a half in, an inch and a half up, and then drill a pilot hole through. So there we have our hole cut. And as far as uh, the utilities we're going to be supplying to this dishwasher, we have a duplex receptacle here that's on a dedicated 20 amp circuit with a uh, ground fault. It's actually a dual function breaker that is both ground fault and arc fault required by code. So we have a 20 amp circuit there dedicated and then we have a hot water line here and this is just teed together under the floor who is a little bit cleaner but you could easily tee into the hot water right over here as well. Up here we have a dishwasher tailpiece uh, that we have installed horizontally in order to keep it more than 20 inches above the floor like the manual requires. And I'll link to uh, useful items or dishwasher tailpiece in the description and I'll also link to my other video about how to install a dishwasher tailpiece uh, in a kitchen uh, drain assembly. We're going to start by routing our water line here next so we'll get this kind of unraveled. Uh, what we have here is uh, 3 8 inch compression on both ends and inside of here we have a standard a PEX angle stop that has three or three eighths compression on it already. And you can just go ahead and remove the compression fitting that came with your angle stop and attach this tube directly to your your stop. Now since this has a rubber gasket in it, it doesn't need to be super super tight, just just snug is all. Next, we're just going to flush this line. Now, uh, this uh, braided hose is long enough, I think this is a six foot one, that I can actually set it in the sink here and then go ahead and turn it on, holding it while I do so so it doesn't go flush. And we'll just let some water. Woo! <laughs> I think I hit a spoon. <laughs> flush through it to get rid of any debris that there might be in the line. And find some qualified personnel to clean up the spill. Why are you spraying it everywhere? Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I didn't put the spoon in there. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now we're going to just tape our lines to the floor here. Leave a little bit of slack back there. Just a little bit of masking tape. You could probably skip this, but it might help a little bit. Next up we'll take our drain line with a sink end, which should have a rubber boot on it, and feed it through. Now you should have a clamp that was included with your kit. We'll set that on our tailpiece and then we'll bring our drain line here. There we go. Got it started there. There we go. And release. And similarly to the water line, push that back and see if we can get this taped down to the floor a little bit as well. Something like that. Next we're going to roll the dishwasher onto its back and then we'll tip it back. And set it down. There we go. Now we're going to remove this cover down here. Just turn these screws quarter to turn. And this whole plastic cover here should just come off like that. It's got some padding on it for noise control. Set that to the side. Using a quarter inch nut driver you can take this screw out right here. 
to access the electrical box. Let me slide out. There we go. And now we'll uh, install the power cord that we have here. First we'll take our uh, uh, wire connector, slide it through like so. Turn that back on. And now we can push our cord through. I'd say about that far is all we really need. And then we'll just uh, lightly snug these up here. You don't want to go too tight on these, just tight enough so that it holds the cord in place. The center cord here on this uh, three-wire cord is a ground, and so we're going to go ahead and connect that. I bent a little loop on it so it can connect a little bit better. And tighten it down with a quarter-inch nut driver or Phillips. Now on these wires, one is smooth and one is ribbed. There's like these little ribs on this. Uh, the smooth one is the hot wire, so it's going to go to the black, and we'll connect that. As tight as you can get it with your fingers is adequate. Other side, got the neutral, and attach that. Now we'll put our covers back in place and anchor the electrical box. So we're going to go ahead and measure our cabinet height here for our opening, and typically it's going to be 34 and a half inches, which is about what I have. It varies slightly, so I'm going to adjust my feet to match this opening so that it's nice and level across the top here. So on the feet here, based on this dishwasher height adjustment chart, I'm going to want my front legs to be adjusted to an inch and an eighth down as measured like this, from that point to that point. And then the back wheels can also be changed to match the height of your countertop. So there's position either one, two, or three. I shouldn't need to adjust it because it's factory set at number three. So I will just adjust my front legs to be an inch and an eighth uh, down. Just spin this down until I hit that inch and an eighth we were talking about. There's an inch. I'm actually going to stop a sixteenth short on this side because of the way my countertop is, but right about there. And now we're ready and we'll stand the dishwasher back up, making sure to keep the power cord out of the way as you do so. we got our sound isolating blanket back in place, and then we're going to take our power cord and we're going to use a few zip ties to secure it along this top rail here to keep it away from this motor since our power comes in from this side over here. And we'll go ahead and clip the extra off of these zip ties. Next we'll be getting the, ready the brackets to install this in place. Uh, in my case I have granite countertops so we're going to uh, be using the side mounting option but if you were going to mount it on top, like if you had laminate countertops or something that you could screw into, you could do it up here. With the side installation these tabs stick out too far here, so we have to break this off, but you want to break it off right there so that all that's left of this bracket is this single hole right there. Just using a needle nose here makes this a little bit easier. There we go. Now we simply insert the bracket with this little groove down first and rock it up so it goes through, and then we get a hold of this little tab and bend it in so the bracket can't come out. And I probably should have done this first, but there's a little plastic piece here that you need to push through the other side. There you go, we are able to get it out just fine. That's so that you can get the screw in from the back side here. Here you can see on the inside here, this is where that little plug is. Push it out, like so. And now we have a spot to take for that. Now uh, just double check the door to make sure that it is working well and it doesn't fall open or go closed. And if it's fine then you should be good, but otherwise follow the instructions to adjust the springs back down there. Right on the bottom edge there, there's springs that you can adjust to control how the door stands open. And then we're going to prepare the end of our water line by installing this fitting here. This is a 90 degree 3 eighths inch compression by 
Uh, this is actually, I think, three quarter inch. It's like basically garden hose connection. Uh, this fitting should come inside of that kit that we talked about earlier that's in the description. And then we just go ahead and get this tightened on here with this facing up. And we'll get that snugged up here with the crescent wrench again. And again, you can let the gasket do the work here. You want to get good and tight, but not snug, I guess, would be the better word. But don't overdo it. Now, I should mention, too, that if your floor is really out of whack, you're going to want to do some shimming in the back portion of this hole here so that the wheels have a nice, even surface to sit on. So now we're going to work on getting this thing over and starting to slide it in place. We've got to make sure that we get this started through that, that hole. Let's see if I can reach and get this started through here. I'll confess, in order to get that uh, cord through there, I had to pull my drain line back out temporarily. Not a big deal, but uh, you, I definitely wouldn't go with any smaller than an inch and three quarter hole, which is what I drilled, because that plug just barely went through there. So, no big deal, but I thought I would mention it. Okay, so our wire is started in there, and our utilities are still underneath there. And we'll start sliding this thing in there, making sure that our insulation blanket is going in okay. Our sound blanket, should we call it a sound blanket? So far so good. A little bit more there. Just about there. Now we're going to get this thing slid in here until the front of this dishwasher door here is in line with the front of the cabinet doors. It looks like on the back, I can see that this thing is kind of leaning back a little bit. So I'm gonna have to go and, I either need to pull it back out to do some shimming, or I can go on the other side and do a little bit of shimming underneath those wheels to bring this cabinet face, or this face forward a little bit more so that this is flush with these. So that's gonna take a little bit of time just kind of getting this to where it is level here and level forward and back. Now since our water line is a little bit extra long here, we're gonna have to make a, a loop to use up the extra, and then very carefully bring this down to the fitting. So there's what that fitting looks like installed on there. And then we'll go ahead and get it just snugged up a little bit. There's a gasket in this one too. To remember to let the gasket do its work, so. Get it snug and then we'll turn it on and check for leaks but before we do that we will connect our drain hose which goes right in here got that shoved in there and then we'll go ahead and get our clamp on here there we go right there okay drain hose is connected oh. we'll go ahead and turn on the water we're going to connect the power. It's plugged in. So now we'll uh, inspect it and look for leaks. So it's all looking pretty good. Uh, I've got to finish getting mine anchored in place. Uh, if you were, once you get this all level, you can anchor this in place through those holes that we talked about earlier. Now on this side, I've got a problem because this is too close to my sink, so I'm going to have to figure something out for that. Uh, but I will get that figured out, I think. That's the main aspect of it, the plumbing, the electrical, the drain, uh, everything uh, completed there. So I'll just show you the back here where this is coming through. So you can kind of see how that drain hole uh, worked there and how much clearance we had. And it's just fine for uh, what needs to go through there. So that's okay. And you can see there's a big old dent right there. That's because this was a, a scratch and dent model or a display model or something. So. We'll see if it works. Yeah, those are your essentials for completing a dishwasher installation. If this video helped you out, please give it, give it a big thumbs up and feel free to subscribe down below for more videos like this one. And also check the description. I'll put anything helpful uh, to go along with this video that I can. And yeah, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the next video. See ya.